by Fox, I think. In the third round of the United States Women's uh, Chess Championship, we see we saw a truly battle of generations uh, between uh, Asrita Eswaran, a teenager uh, only 13 years old, and the veteran player Camilla Bakinskaita, who is 46 years old. And well, the game itself was truly interesting, and but in advance, I will say that the most amazing part of it is going to be the end game, where we're gonna have four queens, nothing less, in the board. Quite a crazy position in the end. Let's see what happened. Uh, the teenager Eswaran is playing white. Uh, Camilla backing sky is black. The opening was a Sicilian defense. The knight of variation. There it goes, a6, the Nidorf. And the young girl chooses the bishop e2. Quiet and positional way of a uh, slow approach against the Nidorf. Now e5, knight b3. And as usual, is backward b6 pawn and the weak square, weak for black, strong for white. Uh, d5 square will be crucial in, in white's plans. So he will, white will try uh, to land a piece there and control. Lots of squares, and eventually in an end game, this d6 pawn could be quite weak for black. Bishop e7, both players castle. In this position, a4, bishop e3, f4 are very popular moves. Instead, uh, Zwaran goes for a less common plan, but a solid one as well. She plays rook e1, and after bishop e6, she plays bishop f3, cementing the white's control over light squares in the center. Now Camilla plays a move that uh, doesn't follow the better known move orders, the better known paths. She plays b5, maybe to try to get her young opponent uh, out of book and make, make her think by herself. Uh, I mean, it's much more common to play here queen c7 or uh, knight bd7 against this. But okay, b 5 always makes sense in these neither Sicilian positions and well she plays it just getting out of theory and make the young girl from California think for herself as Warren reacts uh, um, in a sound way she plays a4 and after b4 a knight lands on d5 and after the exchanges bishop takes a pawn must take Black argues that white hasn't been able to keep a piece on d5, which was certainly something desirable for white to have more control of the board and an open file on the d file, uh, I mean, to have the d file open to attack the weak d6 pawn. So well, both players have more or less achieved what uh, a little of what they were looking for, and well, the position is roughly balanced. Now a5, Camilla protects her e4 pawn, queen d3, knight a6, bishop develops to d2. Now going to d7 with the knight, with the idea of reinforcing the possibility of playing any knight to c5, and also a5 could be a possibility, or expanding here on the king side in the center. Going to c5 right away is a big mistake, because white takes. After taking, there is a strong passed pawn on the d file and advancing it. White is getting some threats. Bishop taking the rook. There is an attack on the bishop on e7, so it is not uh, good for black in any way. That's why bishop knight d7 lo makes lots of sense. Now c3, and now uh, that c5 is more protected than before. Camilla lands a knight there. A couple of pieces are exchanged, <clears throat> and the queen goes to c4. Uh, as Warren tries to play solid, just not to blunder anything, protecting things. It's normal, I mean, she's her first US championship. She, she's, of course, the youngest of all the players playing against international masters, against very highly uh, higher rated players, so it uh, can't be that easy to play these strong players here. Now black plays bishop g5, trying to exchange his bishop, uh, getting rid of white's bishop pair, and white accepts. 
and after C takes A takes, <coughs> sorry, uh, white has an interesting outside path on, on the A file, but black pieces are quite active. There is always a possibility of playing <coughs> F5 and control even more the center, so the position is um, roughly equal, I guess, but well, some interesting possibilities for both players. Bishop e2, rook fb8 is played. Camilla tries to get active on the queen side. b3, not allowing e3 by black. This could be a little dangerous. The knight would be protecting the pawn. There could be some rook activity against the queen, etc. So b3, defending the a4 pawn. And a5. So black gets some extra space in the center in the king side. And if if certainly white didn't uh, have this uh, passed pawn on a4, her position would be uh, not easy to play, but having this uh, passed pawn is compensating uh, more active black pieces, I guess. Queen c2 was played, maybe with the idea to replace the bishop, to put the bishop on c4, and knight e4, and well, she goes bishop c4, in fact, rook a5. So that after rook a c1, the rook comes to the c file on c5 and will put a little pressure on this open file. I mean, there was a possibility here suggested by the computer to sacrifice an exchange on e4 and to take a pawn. Well, interesting. Uh, white must blockade things, I guess, and rely on her past pawn. In the, in the future endgame, but okay, this will didn't happen after rook ac1, as we saw rook c5, and now rook e3 happened. I guess with both defensive and maybe offensive, uh, aggressive uh, options. Now Camilla plays g6, just solidifying her position. It was interesting maybe to play knight c3, and well, after rook a1. Rook a8 always with the possibility of removing the main defender of the c4 bishop taking on a4. Uh, remember the rook is here uh, against the queen on the c file. Also, black would have some active possibilities playing a4, uh, playing e4, a4, maybe having some chances on the king side. So this would be an interesting and uh, fairly aggressive position for black. Quite an interesting one. Well, instead g6 is solid, now rook goes to a1, uh, the a pawn is uh, the main weapon white has in this position more or less, and Camilla relocates the queen to the queen side here, she doesn't see what else the queen can do there, and he goes to d8, probably to go to b6 as we will see. Now king h1 against this idea, uh, the young girl doesn't want to have uh, her king on the diagonal which the black queen is going to control in a minute, so she just moves this way, this way, and also with another uh, interesting and aggressive idea we will see very soon. After queen b6, she plays the very interesting g4 move, giving herself the possibility to put the rook on g1 and suddenly have some attacking chances on the king side against the black king. Now here is probably one of the key moments of the game because. Uh, Camilla plays rook c7, just going back with the rook to maybe defend this king. But it seems there was, well, it was a computerish move, of course, but there was a long sequence here in which black could, uh, it was quite an interesting line, in fact, uh, analyzed by Morris actually during the live stream. Black could sacrifice an exchange here with rook take c4 to take, uh, to have an interesting passed pawn on his own in the b file. Now this could follow as b3, both uh, rook and queen are defending this very strong passed pawn. Queen b2, now queen d4 is suggested. Very interesting exchanging. Now black has um, sacrificed material, but even so, uh, she's willing to exchange queens in this situation because it will give him, uh, her in this case, another passed pawn on the d file. So queen must take, pawn takes attacking the rook. Rook goes to e2 b2, rook b1, now it's important not to blunder with 
knight c3 because the rook on the e file takes on b2. And this is much better for, for white, of course. Instead, the other passed pawn keeps rolling d3, and even if uh, white takes the b pawn, rooks are exchanged. Now, black is forcing white to sacrifice his rook, her rook for the pawn because if rook b1, I mean. Uh, this is complete disaster for white. Otherwise, black should white should uh, sacrifice the rook right away. But now she has on her uh, she has her own uh, cast pawn on the a file, and black is just on time to stop it. After these exchanges, maybe a five knight takes a c four, a six knight b six. Black is just on time to step the a pawn. Uh, he has a, she has a knight for a pawn, a piece up, but uh, it's not clear which of these kings will be able to control the enemy's pawns. I mean, a7, king f7, king g2. Which king will be more powerful in this complicated endgame? Uh, not easy. The computer says it's equal, but there are really lots of tricks here. Of course, the black knight cannot uh, move from here because uh, a8 queen game over. So. Uh, both queens must try to get a position, I guess, something like that, to try to control uh, opponent's pawns. So this was a very interesting idea, which Camilla didn't play. She played rook c7 with defensive poses. And after g takes, g takes, rook f3 was played, attacking the f5 pawn defender of the knight. Rook f8 defends it, and now rook g1 check. Suddenly, all of all of a sudden, white gets. Uh, some activity. Rook g7. Rooks are exchanged on g7. And bishop d3 is played. White is threatening simply to win a pawn on e4. And well, Camilla uh, strangely uh, just doesn't do anything about it. She just allows white to get this pawn on e4. So, as Rita as Warren does it, rook takes d3. She even exchanged the rook. And well, White doesn't take the rook right away. She plays the interesting intermediate move, queen g4 check. The rook isn't going anywhere. And this is forcing black king to move into a war square. The king goes to h6, and now white takes uh, f3. All of a sudden, black lost all these potential threats uh, she had on the middle game, is her attacking possibilities, and suddenly white is up a pawn, and he, she has an outside pass pawn on a4. A uh, better placed queen, much more active piece, and absolutely all the reasons to believe this could be. Uh, uh, there are lots of chances for this to be a victory for white. Now, queen c7, maybe with the idea to go to c1, a check, and another possibility missed by the players here, at least by white. There was a very interesting idea of playing queen g4. Uh, now, what if queen c1 check? Well, King just go to h uh, to g2. And what if queen c5 attacking um, the d5 pawn? Well, very very interesting. h4. I'm threatening checkmate in one move. And even if uh, black takes the pawn with a check, white just goes g1. Uh, d1 is protected by the queen. There are no more checks. And how is uh, actually black going to protect uh, herself uh, from the checkmate? Well, it seems the only way. Is to play e4, defending g4, but now very simple. Queens are exchanged on g5. King takes, and this outside pass pawn on a5 uh, decides the game, decides black's fate, and this is 1 0 game over. So, well, this was an interesting line uh, uh, that the young player didn't see. Uh, she played queen h3 check and went on to give lots of checks to this black king. Actually, at some point, I guess she lost her track because she's forcing uh, after king g2, e4 was played. She's eventually going to force black king into a much safer place, in fact, a much more aggressive place. Queen g3 is played here, queen c5 attacks the pawn, queen h4, uh, well, now black shouldn't take on d5 because similar to the line we just saw, if the queens are exchanged, uh, the, the, the protected passed pawn on the a file just decides the fate. 
So after queen h4, Camilla didn't took, didn't take the pawn. She played king d5. Now queen takes h7. Now she takes with the queen. After h4, the king goes forward. King d4. Queen g6. Queen d5. Uh, threatening a discovered check. So queen g7. King d3. Queen g3. This is what I meant earlier. Uh, uh, Swaran is forcing Black's king uh, into much safer place. In fact, a much uh, aggress much more aggressive for Black because now there's uh, some potential attacks on uh, against White's king uh, king side pawn. Sorry, queen side pawns. And well, queen e3, queen e5 was played. Black wants to get uh, her her d5 going. Now queen g5, of course, uh, black must refuse any queen exchange because the outside pass pawn just decides the game. So queen d4, h5 is played. Now king takes on d3, but uh, Ezwaran is relying on her other pass pawn on the h file, h6, king c2. Now queen g7, once again, black is refusing to exchange queens with some powerful reasons. And queen d5, once again. Uh, there is a similar threat as a couple of moves earlier of a discovered attack. Well, the young girl uh, just keep calm, keeps calm and plays h7. Now we're reaching uh, the most beautiful uh, moment of the game when both these pawns, the e pawn for black and the h pawn, pawn for white, are going uh, to get uh, a queen. Now king g3 after the check, e2. One queen, another queen. There it goes. Amazing. We have four ball, four queens on the board, and well, a fairly complicated position as always. And we, when we have that many pieces, even uh, much more if there are all queens, uh, lots of checks, lots of uh, counter checks, discovered checks in the board. White plays queen d2 check, king d3. Now another check with the other queen from h7. Queen from d to e4, and now after queen b3, actually it's a pity because the live stream went wrong in, in, in this right moment, and we couldn't exactly see what happened. Some people said Camilla just made an illegal move and then resigned, but it seems that she just blundered heavily in this position. She played king d4, after which queen takes e4, queen takes e4, and well. Queen takes b4 check, the queens are exchanged, and the veteran back in sky to resign here because after the queens are exchanged, black is, uh, is one move short um, to stop this a5 pawn. Instead, if queen takes e4 check here, she takes with the king, there is a skewer, black loses her queen on e1. But let us go back to this position after queen b3 check. Remember, we had a couple of checks here. She put the uh, queen on e4 and white checks here. It seems uh, Camilla missed uh, uh, the very beautiful queen c3 check uh, move, uh, not a check yet. Sorry. So you could see her. It was it was a curious um, um, image to see her uh, even after the game uh, alone on, on the board. This was the last game in the tournament to finish. She was trying to find out what had she missed. Well, the move that she missed was this queen c3, uh, which in fact uh, is winning for black. Um, and there's an absolutely amazing uh, continuation here. Probably this is what she missed. She didn't sell. Maybe she was afraid of this queen d5 check. And now this queen on e4 cannot take the one on d5 because it is pinned. But uh, against this move, uh, Black has the absolutely amazing. Maybe this is this could be the most amazing move uh, I've ever saw. Uh, counter check, discover check, king e2, and now the queen on c3 is checking white. And actually, there are two uh, white queens hanging on d5 and h7. So uh, Black is uh, very easily winning the game. Probably this is what she missed. This is, I mean, this sequence is incredible. After king d4, I'm just gonna, sorry. After um, this check, queen c3 was the move, and I think, she, I guess she missed. She was afraid of this check because 
it seems that white is winning the queen on e4, both queens are attacking it, uh, you cannot do anything but to lose it, but black has this incredible king e2 discovered check, and now it's black who's winning the queen and white is losing it, because both rook, uh, both queens of white on h7 and e5 are hanging. So this was an incredible finish um, for a nice game, uh, and now we have the 13 years old national master uh, Asrita Zwaran, uh, with two out of three in the, U uh, in the U.S. Women's Championship, quite an amazing performance so far for her. Let us see how does she continue playing. Thanks for watching.